Hello and welcome to another video from the only YouTube channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's video is going to be kind of an extension to the video series I did entitled Food Storage System. And the reason for this is a couple of my subscribers, uh, Russell and Sheila, asked me about the dimensions of my cabinets. I think they're building a house and they're thinking about a food storage system and they want some ideas about what they need for a food storage system. As far as the sizes go, if you are going to have standard cabinets, you want to have standard depth. In other words, this is two feet. And the reason for that is, if you get something that's deeper or shallower and you put a counter on it, you'll have to have a custom countertop built. Whereas I bought this countertop for about $75 from Lowe's, it's a standard size, just cut it and put it in there, no problem. Uh, I had these cabinets custom built for two reasons. One, I knew a guy that could do it, who's what you call a jack leg, and he is not a licensed contractor, he's not a cabinet builder, he's not a car painter, he's not a, a plumber, not an electrician, but he does all of that, and I've seen his work, and he did good work, and he worked off the books. Uh, cash only, ain't paid Social Security in his whole life, and he was 50-something years old, and uh, any, anyhow, I wanted wood, and I had experience with these off-the-shelf cabinets from Lowe's. When you start putting heavy loads on them, they sag. It's just the way it is. And also, if you get a flood, they ruin. Whereas these cabinets, they go under a flood, you just come in and pressure wash them, they're fine. Now, the ones on top don't necessarily have to be standard size, but you want them to be so that they only cover about half the countertop. And the reason for that is you can use your ambient light from windows or whatever you got going on and it'll light the counter the top down here. Whereas if you had the cabinet all the way out, not only would it be dark, but it'd be hard to work up under here. And uh, we knew we wanted cabinets because our kitchen is teeny tiny. And as soon as we got in, and it, was, it served its purpose, but within a few months, we had more pots and pans that would fit in our kitchen. Had a microwave which wouldn't fit in our kitchen. We had a bread machine and a fryer and they wouldn't fit in the kitchen. So we knew we wanted a countertop. That being said, we are now going to talk about dimensions you have to think about. For one thing, almost everybody universally uses these five gallon buckets for storing dry goods. And uh, after the fact, once we had the cabinets built, we come up with these because we didn't want to have to take a five gallon bucket out every time we wanted something to eat. So we got these canisters from uh, Sam's Club, very cheap and they do what they're supposed to do and just by luck you got the five gallon bird seed bucket or whatever you call it in this and they just slide right on in but guess what this is the only cabinet we can do that with why that set right there is so tight it's like this one you can't get your stuff out the only way to get this out is to pick it pick up the canister slide the bucket out and then take the canister out and it's just that they're they're all a little bit different height you can't even tell it from looking at it, but this is lower. And that's part of having them custom built cabinets by a guy that's just, uh, you know, will, can do anything. He uh, didn't use a jig to make these, so they're all just a little bit different. In fact, when he brought them up here, I went out and unloaded the truck. To make things easier, I, I dragged all the drawers out of all the cabinets, and then when he saw that, he was like, oh my God, what did you do? I don't know how to put them drawers back, because every drawer is a little different. Uh. But I'm still very happy with it. Very good system. Now, if you're going to use these bird seed buckets, they're 12 inches across. Standard cabinets you buy from Lowe's, the upper cabinets, are 12 inches. But that's the outside dimensions. The inside dimensions are like 11 and a half. And if you decide you're going to put bird seed buckets in your upper cabinet, it won't work. You won't be able to shut your drawers. But down here, it works just fine. Now, I could have carefully line these up on the floor and measured my buckets and figured out how much space I needed because you really want to work as efficiently as possible. If you know what you're going to put in, go ahead and measure for that. Tell your cabinet maker exact inside dimensions and maybe even add an inch to everything. You know, just measure your wall, measure, figure out that, you know, your cabinets are going to be an inch thick right here because you got two walls. Uh, and just tell them, tell, make sure your cabinet maker knows exactly what your inside dimensions have to be for your particular food storage system. Now, I didn't think it out as far as what to do up here. 
But it might be that if you know you're going to just have cans, you may want to have your shelves just exactly the height that you need to get your cans in and out without them jamming. You see up here how we have to lay cans on their side? That kind of irritates me because I like being able to see my labels and I like being able to rotate things easily. But other than that, there really isn't anything to keep in mind. Now in my other room, we'll go take a look at this. This is also part of the food storage system. And these cabinets are 12 inches thick, and so are these. The only reason I had the man do it like that is because I got a real skinny room here. Now, I could have just made this a solid wall of cabinets with no space here, but I had in my mind that I wanted a couple of wine racks, and I knew I was gonna have my TV here because this is where we sit all the time. The other room, before I had those cabinets, we actually had two walk-in closets for food. The hurricane came, and since I'm not a builder, I didn't leave all the little spaces like builders do. I made everything super, super tight. Well, having all that plywood and uh, framing tight when the flood waters come in, it all swelled up and it buckled that whole wall and broke everything to pieces. So we had to throw all that out and start from scratch. And I figured since I was starting from scratch, I'd go ahead and put what I wanted in there, which was some cabinets. And so that's what we got. But there's nothing wrong with having a solid wall of just cabinets and no counter space. See, this is nothing but a piece of, uh, these are pine, pine boards, uh, one by whatever they are. It's 12 inch cabinet, so I got about 14 inches here. And I just, uh, I took and painted them black, that's it. Oh well, that's all the ideas I got on uh, having storage, is just figure out what's gonna be in your system measure each can, each jar, kind of stack them on the floor to see exactly how wide and how deep you want everything. Look at the wall you're going to put your cabinets on, divide that space by that amount. And you just have to make decisions based on your space and what you're going to store. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. <laughs>